now we have another great speaker coming in is from the dot digital uh the matthew or one of the great friends uh, uh he has worked as account manager and email strategist and partner manager at dot digital and then his passion is about technological implementation and and working on the marketing aspects uh, what i have loved is his topic he is talking about how you you can utilize data such that you can uh, work uh, on the same database and then generate more business so as we say data is a next oil we have to understand how data mining can help how it can uh, pursue us to personalization in bi we'll uh, go for listening uh, you know great tips from matt and over to you matt perfect thank you very much for that introduction and once again it's an absolute pleasure to be here today uh, i was very fortunate to attend uh, last year when we could meet in person uh, and i've attended a number of the meet magentos uh, across southeast asia it's a fantastic community and it's truly a pleasure to be able to speak with you here today uh, we've joined by a number of speakers last year who really helped drive the industry and to drive the community uh, and it's been uh, you know a, an interesting year and a lot of different facets and rather than focusing on the elements that we've kind of all been hearing about and heard about over the last couple of months i really want to focus on some of the positives and the areas that we're seeing merchants magento merchants all across southeast asia and apac really stand out and really deliver as that's the core fundamental of the dot digital message it's a, our message is simple. It's to empower customers to engage their audience across all touch points. Uh, and hopefully uh, you've come across Dot Digital before. For those that have not, forgive me, just a very brief introduction. As a global organization for the last 21 years, we've been servicing thousands of clients to enrich their database of customers to drive digital communications across multiple channels. We are very well uh, serviced down here in APAC with our operation based out of Sydney uh, and Melbourne and Singapore. I'm joined by four colleagues in Singapore as we help clients all across Southeast Asia to leverage the dot digital uh, all in one marketing automation platform to deliver on that value. For yourselves as Magento merchants, for developers, for SIs and for partners of this wonderful platform, Dot digital uh, engagement cloud, our integration is baked into the core code. So there's no additional in uh, integration, development work. This is there for you to activate today for your customers. Or if you are a merchant, you can click and set up a free trial. And what I'll be talking through today is unlocking the data that you already have. You've got a wealth of information with your orders and your customer behaviors that we can start to use to make intelligent decisions talking back to kind of something Nicholas touched on, it's having that personalized approach and having that human conversation. And we can do that with digital at scale. We are built into a broad ecosystem of technology partners from you know, loyalty platforms through to payment gateways, which we see change as we work across the entire globe. The clients that we work with predominantly look to drive digital communications across these channels and to personalize the experience that customers have whether that is in email, SMS, push notifications, that retargeting through the social channels, the key fundamental here is they have a platform that goes on top of you know, the amazing platform of Magento to drive that marketing automation. We've made that simple by baking into the core code and working very closely with the Adobe team. It's an opportunity now, and some of the things that I'll be showcasing is how merchants, Magento merchants all across Southeast Asia are using our app to drive that engagement. I'm very pleased to say as we work with clients all across uh, Southeast Asia, our app is fully translated as well into numerous languages. And it's one of the many reasons why merchants click into the administration of uh, Magento, they go to their store config and they set up a free trial with our platform. The, the advice and the elements that I'll be talking through today is predominantly just going to be around how we're seeing the, the region grow and develop. Uh, it's been said many, many times, that obviously the value that's going to be coming out of uh, Southeast Asia and the Asian countries over the next couple of years. But the four key trends that our merchants are coming and talking to us about, this is the rise and the kind of continuation and proliferation of social and social commerce, not just being a community, but an ecosystem in which we can learn, experience, share, buy, review, it's now going to be growing and growing and uh, it'll be growing even further over the years to come. 
We want to be able to make the smart decisions with data. And data is at the heart. We you know, come from a world where previously in the 60s, 70s and 80s, decisions were made based on intuition. Now we can make the right decisions based on the data that we hold. And it's amazing how much data we have that we don't know we have and what we can then do with that using platforms to bring all of that together. There's other ones around you know, direct consumer subscription and a focus on e-commerce regulation. For years, we've seen uh, regulation tighten up. In Thailand, we're seeing it more so and more so. And various laws and legislations are putting pressure, especially as brands look to come from marketplaces and you know, obviously go D to C, uh, that how we uh, look at regulation, how we talk to customers. And there's a couple of elements that I'll focus on, but the two that I really want to play to today is number one and number two. And as we look at our customers over the last six months, we've seen some huge trends. And this is a report that we put together based on all the merchants that Dot Digital look after across the globe and the rise of their usage uh, of kind of the platform in key areas. It's unsurprising to see healthcare equipment and technology and hardware seeing a rise, not just in deployments, opens, clicks, those engagement metrics, but also conversions as we've all had to buy additional monitors and equipment to be able to kind of work from home and have that same experience that we have an ability working from home rather than from a dedicated office. But one of the elements that we didn't foresee, I think is really important uh, visualized here in this graph. Over the last six months, where we, as we came into the end of February, March, as the reality was setting in, Utilization of our platform shown in blue, which is the number of automations that uh, were set up during that time dropped. And it dropped as marketers took a step back. They paused what they were doing to understand what is this new reality? How are they working and how are they going to kind of push forward? But as you can see from the graph spiking up, we've seen up towards a 20% increase in the utilization of automation as we're coming out of this and the ability to drive different communications. This has resulted in a fantastic increase in revenue. 245 million recovered uh, in just the last six months for the clients. Cart abandonment being the one number one program that we set up for every merchant. It's buttons, clicks. It takes minutes with inside the Magento uh, integration that we've put together for you. 80% of those cart abandonments go out within the first 24 hours and 65% within the hour. And this makes a big impact on conversion. Globally, it's about 23%, but here in APAC, it's at 28%. APAC customers and consumers respond to cart abandonment, which is why one of the programs that we thoroughly recommend that brands set up when they are starting to look at different ways for marketing automation. But it's the fundamental of uh, using automation is what we use and how we communicate. It's no surprising that you know growth from uh, the number of users and internet users is increasing and social media taking the lion's share of increase and it will continue to do so. And social media is that community and where everyone can experience, learn, develop and share with all their friends and peers. It's the words and the vocabulary that come to play and they can have traction. That traction comes from, you know, hashtags, share your ears by Disney or share a Coke, National Fried Chicken Day. A number of them that kind of resonate now when we can see data and visualize the impact of all of this um, uh, impact of uh, those words and how they translate over time. But one that really resonated with me was one was Kentucky for Christmas. And in Japan, it started in 1974, um, where um, the manager of the first KFC in country saw an opportunity to create what he called a party barrel to be sold at Christmas. And so it was just a year after, the 90s, sorry, a couple of years after, KFC had a national marketing plan calling it Kentucky for Christmas. And it's estimated now 3.6 million Japanese families have KFC as a tradition uh, during this holiday season. Now that started off based on intuition. That started off as someone who saw an opportunity, believed that they could do it and drove that forward. And Takeshi Akawa now, well, during that time became the managing director of KFC, which has so successful this campaign came to be. Nowadays, as marketeers, we have the opportunity to do the same thing because we have the data at our disposal. Our your data or your brand.com website holds a wealth of information. We spend time and effort looking at social and engagement. We've got on, you know, you've got all your order history, your customer data, what they bought, did they buy it with a discount? All of this data, your web behavior, what they looked at, how long they spent on it, it's there, ready for you. 
And then in the social channel, we can use all of that insight to then have conversations in the areas our customers are. Instagram, Facebook, huge within kind of the Americas and EMEA. We're also seeing, you know, cacao line when we look at uh, Japan and um, Korea. We've got Viber out in the Philippines, TikTok as it's kind of grown and positioned out into the West as well. These are all examples of channels and communities where we could be on and can grow into. But a lot of the time we focus, it's too much noise, there's too much going on, where do we spend time? And a lot of the, what we do with merchants is understand the value. Where are your customers and is there a value there for you? And the slides will be available afterwards, but I particularly like this customer example. The reason I like it is it showcases what, if we look at this far right column, the average value of a customer. An average value of a customer based on the, the, these metrics would show, obviously email versus Facebook is performing a lot stronger. When we break that data out, looking at the, you know, the finer details here, you know, there isn't a CFO finance director on the planet that wouldn't see, well, Facebook is only 10 cents to me, whereas email is $1.50. 15 times more, I'm going to put more money into it. But actually, when we look at a combined customer, a customer that's engaged with your own brand, your brand.com marketing automation, whether that's email, SMS, and is a customer following you, engaging with you on social, has a much greater value. This is the sort of information that we can then use to justify how much we use to spend on their various Facebook campaigns or TikTok or Instagram, whatever it is that our customers are, wherever they are, they are engaging with our brand, wherever they're learning about you, we can spend time and effort on that. Once we do get those customers, we have got them engaged. That's fantastic. But our goal here is to drive them then to our brand.com and have them onto the site so that we can learn more about them. And we're not learning more about them to be scary, creepy, as Nicholas was alluding to. We're learning more about them so that we can have that human conversation and to, to target and to, to, to personalize that experience. 91% of brand uh, individuals are more likely to spend more money with you if you personalize that experience. Nicholas just shared with us with 83% of them wanting to do more. And that's where programs and automation can do that work for you to drive that customer value and how we use the data from those social channels to enrich the experiences that we deliver and then push back. And I keep mentioning data, data, data. And it's interesting to see that we look at some of the Asian countries, we've got the, the likes of Indonesia and Thailand, they entirely skip that desktop generation. We don't have that as it's mobile first. And mobile is ranked as one of the number one kind of, um, kind of, what is the number one device for us is we use it for everything now as mentioned it's the alarm clock it's the the research phase we're sitting dual screening in front of a computer in front of the tv sorry looking at our favorite tv show but actually we're researching during this time holiday, holiday gifts for our significant others and family and that's where data is, is is all over the place that we look to try and understand all of that and the architecture and infrastructure that we would need and uh, for any of the kind of si's and uh, you know uh, marketers are on uh, the webinar today. We're looking here at just the various different touch points and stores and where does data sit and what do I use to, to kind of communicate. And whether it is email, web, mobile, or Facebook Messenger or push notification, they, they, the reality is it's a handset, it's a device. And that device, yes, is utilized by individuals to receive messages. And there's obviously stats about, you know, 98% of SMS are opened, 55% uh, of emails are read on mobile. These are great, but these metrics don't give us the idea of that user behavior. And user behaviors are evolving and changing. Less than three years ago, uh, it was 1 billion Facebook messages were sent between businesses and individuals. Now it's at 20 billion. It's a huge increase, 20 times in just a short space of time. And that's showcasing how more and more customers are, uh, and brands are communicating on these channels. And I keep mentioning Facebook, but predominantly across Southeast Asia and the APAC countries, Facebook isn't it's not there as, as prevalent uh, as others. Line, Cacao, WeChat, as I've mentioned, have taken place and are much more utilized as ecosystems for individuals to experience, to learn and evolve. But those ecosystems, as we kind of go into this world now of social commerce, are evolving and are changing. And so if I look here specifically at kind of the role over the last five years, We've seen product catalogs and ads, and we, we experiment a little bit as marketeers. We put our products into you know, to Google uh, Shopping, and we place them into Facebook, and that built us a little marketplace. You could shop the look and build, you know, talk to your customers as they were on there. 
huge generational switch as we move more towards videos you know and this is the last couple of years that we saw that rise of kind of video content then instagram and now TikTok as more visual appealing uh, content or curated content is important finally as we look at facebook shops is the next level of how this this um, ecosystem is retaining their customers held within their environment so going back to that slide where i had your data and you know your social data these platforms and ecosystems are going to be holding more and more of your data on your customers. So what do you have? What do you want? And what do you need to be able to deliver that personal human conversation to your customers across these channels? And once we have all of that data, what do we do with it? And if we look at this word that's uh, it's been thrown around for years and years, personalization, personalization, on-site, off-site, online, in-store. We want to get to the point in which we, we deliver that experience that's individualized to a person. One-to-one -one communication. I want to be able to walk in, sorry, go to a website. It's just as if I was walking into a store. I want them to know my name, who I am. Hey, Matthew. Yes, we've got some bright new sneakers that you can probably see uh, in the background here that uh, you'd be interested in. And that's the experience I want. I want someone to feel like they've picked me. Just as for any Harry Potter fans that you have out there, the sorting hat put us into one of four houses so we could be with people just like us. And this drives more value to the customer. And with that value, the individuals are more likely to give up more data. Again, Nicholas alluded to 83% of individuals are more likely to give more data if you um, give them that personalized experience. And this isn't reserved just for one demographic or group. We talk about millennials and Gen X and baby boomers. There's a discernible difference between product recommendations that match their needs. It's, it's barely 10% in some cases. And in doing so, we have there an opportunity that everybody wants this experience, more so obviously for uh, millennials as they're coming through. But equally, the great news for Marketeer is that this needs to be at the heart of our strategy. It's not just that personalization, but it's the what data do we have? Who, what do we know about our customers and how can we use it? Once we have that, we can go to social media where they do their brand research. I've actually just color coded the countries that we operate in here as a, as, as a group of people gathering today. And in showing so, this is a strong message for us to really focus on. As a brand, no matter what we sell, as an agency, no matter what our customers sell, social media is used to compare, contrast, and learn across all demographics. And as we look to different generations, it is search engines up there and those search engines change per region as well. Is Google prevalent? Obviously it's uh, Bing, it's in Japan. We still have social networks that take that lion's share of those communities where people want to learn, engage uh, with their peers and with organizations. And so when we look at increasing revenue from e-commerce, data should be at the start of this. Data will lead to that retention journey. Data will allow you to understand what you have, what you need, and what you would want to have to be able to have what was a human conversation through these digital channels. And so there's uh, not a feedback option here, but I'll give you one second just to think about it. It's staggering that we talk about data, and as a marketer, you know, you sit there going, I've got too much, but actually we do. We fundamentally have too much data. ISPs right now are crawling with the amount of individuals that are consuming even more data. Now we're all connected from home rather than a central point. But the question is how much data are we are creating each and every single day? And that's where it's 25 quintillion, that's 18 zeros, and 90% of data has been created in the last three years. But this is there, you're not alone. Everyone has this fear. Budgets and resource are usually the ones that uh, is the reason why we're not in, uh, don't have the opportunity to do this. Going back to the slides I mentioned before, utilizing the data we have, a simple analysis can give us some justification to spend more time on this, as the strategy is the most important element. But when we look at, you know, I would like to learn more, I wonder if I can, uh, or I want to create some great content. We usually do that ourselves, and that's great. I feel sometimes we can take our marketing hat off, and hat off and put our consumer hat on. But actually, where we see the greatest value is user-generated content. User-generated content is that secret source to drive consumers to make decisions. People buy from other people, not from brands. They buy the why, as Nicholas was alluding to earlier. 
And it's the searches that people look for is really showcasing the data that they want. And that, I really do like this. 92% of consumers trust a recommendation from other people, even strangers. They like strangers more than they like us as brands. And that's really telling as we look to uh, a simple analogy of where um, data takes us and where how we have real world problems. And as we look to try and in, to build uh, different communities, I, I use the uh, like dating apps as an example, swipe right, swipe left. These apps are there and we build those anonymous conversations that hopefully lead to kind of um, relationships and love. But actually we find more value when we have a friend to introduce us. Oh, hey, I've got someone I might want to introduce you to. And the reason I mention this, it's something we should really focus on, which is the, the element of user generated content and the element of content, the secret source comes from putting yourself in someone else's shoes, being more personal, be more human. Being more human allows you to move away from being robotic, being that person that people want to engage with and want to talk to. And that's why we're seeing so many disruptor brands taking on the bigger, larger chains over the last couple of years. Brands that are coming out of, you know, specialisms and, you know, even small handbag fashion retailers, they've got three or four products and that's what they sell. So being this way, we can look at different ways of classifying our customers. A simple model that we work with our clients on is the RFM, the recency, frequency, and monetary value. It's automatically calculated for customers using all the data from Magento. And I encourage you, if you're a merchant or you are an SI, please log into you know, your uh, admin area in a sandbox and connect through using a trial account to see how we can visualize all the data you have now. If you want to see more of that, my colleague Clara at 1pm is talking through merchant examples and how that's connecting into the back end of Magento. But this element of being more human couldn't be more important. Once we understand who our customers are, we can then start talking to them. And buyer profile and buyer insights is the most important. If you haven't uh, read Adele's book, I fully recommend it. It's uh, a, a very much focused on the insights that we can gain from customer experiences. So we can align our marketing to the strategies that we put in place to ultimately, as, as it's alluded, to win their business, not more business, their business. We're looking at individuals. And that's where we have the notion of personas. And a persona is where we group individuals, like-minded individuals, just like I said, Harry Potter and a sorting hat, whether you're in Gryffindor or one of the other houses, we can build groups of people and then talk to them with content, with content that customers like you like this. And we need these personas to be able to make our job a little, just that little bit easier, rather than trying to focus straight away on a one-to-one -one and individualize. Let's start off by who are our customers? What do they like? Why do they buy from me rather than my competitor? And in doing so, you can run surveys and polls they're more likely to give up more data because we all love free stuff. Offer them, you know, dot digital. We have these little pugs, uh, Winston's that you can ask me for later if you want some of our uh, swag. We all love free things. And if we can give uh, data away to get it, we're more than happy to do so. And as I showed before, millennials, Gen X, Gen Zs are even more happy to do than a variety of other demographics. What's important to you as a brand? Is it age, is it gender, is it where they live? To be able to build those personas, to use the data, to listen to it, to humanize that journey that you go through with customers. So personas plus that RFM can really help you elevate what you're doing now to be able to drive those human conversations, to be able to deliver that experience to your customers. So over time, one of the things that we looked to work with and have been doing that's led to those results that clients have had, $245 million recovered in the last six months just using cart abandonment is to acquire the data you need. So just as a final thought, uh, it's very easy to take data, load it into a platform and deploy and make money. So take your email customers, load them into a platform, send an email, send an SMS, you'll make money. Driving awareness with some content can really, that can have results. The results that come that provide long-term value come from being open, honest, and transparent. The ethics that come from understanding the customers, who they are, what's their interest, and then using that to build content, to build community that allows them to engage with like-minded people across your different channels that they want to be on. Don't overwhelm yourself. We shouldn't ever assume. Don't think creative first, think data first. 
And in doing so, we will save our, ourselves time, effort, and we'll gain much faster, much uh, higher results. As we look at loyalty, lifetime values, the marketing terms that we use to describe our customers. But I look at you know new friends, new colleagues, new people that can help our brand, even though they are consumers, these people, if we get them involved and customers involved in our experience, get them involved in our brand, they can help us drive that experience. And again, all of this might sound big, and it's a little mantra that we have here at Dot Digital, which is to think big, plan what data you have, but start small. Build on your day to day tomorrow or week. Build what you need, and you'll scale quickly. If you were to take some data and set an automation up once a week, you'll have 52 by the end of the year. This will make you the envy of all your competition. And in doing so, we'll gain better results for our organizations uh, we work for, but also deliver a better experience to our customers. Thank you very much for listening. I thoroughly hope you enjoyed that. Please do stop by, meet the team, come chat to Clara at one o'clock as she presents. And if any of that resonated with you and you want to chat with myself or any of the team that we have here today, we thoroughly look forward to speaking to you and I look forward to meeting with you uh, when we can do face-to-face. -face. Thanks for your time. Yeah, thank you, Matt. Uh, it was great to hear that uh, RFM analysis has been my favorite topic, but that is the data which we have. And then when we connect that with the social data, which creates the magic, that was the amazing part which you have explained. And I think, yes, uh, people can use this and gain more traction. That's great. But the fun part, I love the one thing, which is 92% of people love the recommendation which is given by the strangers. I think people know their acquaintance and then they trust them too much, right? <laughs> so can be, it <laughs> can be. Yeah. So that was a fun element, but yes, uh, data is the next oil and then it's RFM plus BI plus personalization and get the magic. Thank you for uh, telling that. Thank you Have very fun. much. Thank you everyone. Yeah. yeah, and all my friends, uh, you can uh, now go on a break, Nico and Network, and then two of my friends will take you to the two different journeys. And then uh, again in the evening time, I'll catch you back. Thank you, thanks for being here.